set to go. Here it is. The battle of the two undefeated. 5-0 and Indiana. 5-0 and Iowa. Indiana with one loss during the season. That was to Vanderbilt earlier in non-conference play. They will tip it again. Bob Showalter as the tip is controlled by Indiana. Chased down by Smart. It's Showalter, Hightower, Ed Hightower, and Sid Rodeheffer. The officials for tonight's game. Indiana with the first possession. Alford working out three-point area. Here is Callaway to the left side and Alford again. The Hoosiers patiently working as they look inside against a man-to-man. -man. Or is it a matchup, John? It's man-to-man -man the first time down the floor. And it's chased down. Aaron shot by Indiana off the rim, and here come the Hawkeyes. Gamble, three points on the way. And the rebound off the hands and out of bounds. It's going to be... No, no it's saved. Now it's out of bounds. Now that's what Iowa and likes to do, a quick shot. They like the fast-paced tempo, and they're an excellent rebounding team. They were able to beat both Illinois and Purdue on the road when their coach, Tom Davis, first year, where uh, they were had more turnovers, 30 turnovers against Purdue on Monday, yet they were able to out-rebound both Illinois and Iowa, or, or Purdue, and win that ball game. So rebounding is a real strength of theirs. Now, Sid Rodeheffer is uh, telling Ed Hightower that he viewed the ball as being touched by the Hawkeyes, and uh, Hightower, the man in control of the ball. Dean Garrett goes over to Tim Garl. He looks like he's got a cut on the right side of his uh, forehead. He looks like he's all right. Just well, put a Roy, towel up to it, and uh, he's right back in the game. Roy Marble had a little trouble the other night uh, in the Purdue game. Marble apparently scratched the retina of his right eye. And now and, there's uh, a question about uh, where uh, trainer Tim Garl went to give Garrett the towel if he crossed the, the line that's in front of the coach's bench. So Tom Davis has been called over uh, to explain the situation. There's Coach Knight pointing to the line. There's Tim Garl on the right. And he wants uh, Bob Show. Coach wants Bob Showalter to come over and explain uh, explain to Bob what's going on. All right, now John, what would the rule be under such a well, circumstance? Well, the, the entire staff, as far as I know, the coaches, assistants, and trainer are not allowed to go past that line. And I believe the official, that's Sid Rodeheffer, uh, is, is making a comment about Garl coming out to check Garrett on the injury, stepping across that line. Well, but I'm not sure what, what's going to become of it, uh, whether it's just a warning or whether it's, uh, it'll be some kind of infraction against Indiana. Well, Coach Knight has that sweater rolled up already. And uh, apparently what they're doing, because he came on the floor, John, apparently it will mean that, okay. uh, that, he, that Garrett has to sit down well, and play through one uh, dead ball situation. That's probably what it was. He really stepped on the floor, not across that line, but but onto the floor. So Steve Isle replaces Garrett in the early going of this game. Let's see what uh, Iowa Here's does to handle it. Zone by Indiana, 2-3. Iowa not a, a real good outside shooting team. In fact, from the three-point range, they're 28% in Big Ten play, just 11 of 38. Marble takes it up, goes right into Thomas, and Thomas called for the first personal of this game. Well, Marble's their real leader. He's the leading scorer on the team at 13 points, but their top six players, uh, are all over eight and a half points a game, so they really spread the scoring out a lot, but uh, Marble's probably the one that likes to go to the best, and Daryl Thomas picks up his first foul. Roy Marble, 6'5", sophomore from Flint, had 10 points against Indiana here at Carver Hawkeye Arena last year. He set an Iowa freshman record with 399 points. And yeah, they are working on Garrett now. Dr. Bamba and Tim Garl both on the sidelines. It looks like he's got a small cut uh, just to to the right of his nose uh, in the eye area, so they're working on him. Isle still in the ball game. Kevin Gamble comes up with Alford. Callaway, Alford three-point range. Steve did not have one of his more productive nights here last year. He had but 10 points. Smart, Alford. Lowhouse comes out just enough to intimidate. Callaway. And it's long. Knocked away. Here comes Iowa. Armstrong to the line. Great feed. And a stop by Horton. And Iowa, with its motion and speed on conversion, has taken a 4 nothing lead. That's, that's their ball game. They like to go to the offensive board, especially with Lowhouse and Gamble, and they like to use the fast break, and Armstrong does an excellent job of bringing the ball to the floor. Won't fall. 
Alford's first shot. Here's B.J. Armstrong. And again, they go to the baseline. This time, Gamble on the drive. And all of a sudden, this motion, and Indiana had hoped to be able to hold them in half court, is proving very, very deadly to the Hoosiers. Six nothing. The drive, the shot, and a foul. That's going to send Rick Calloway to the line. Garrett checks back in now. And uh, let's see who replaces. So Steve's going to go out now. Steve Isle will go out. Here's the play again. Callaway dribbling to the left. And right there is going to be the bump by Marble. But the Iowa Chuck is such an explosive team. You've seen them come back uh, against Illinois. They came back uh, against North Carolina State, too, up in Alaska. They were down 12 points with 2 minutes and 48 seconds to go. And North Carolina State had the ball. And, of course, the state was a team that beat Iowa in the first, uh, ter first round of the tournament last year. And they were able to pull that game out, and they've been able to beat Iowa or beat Purdue and uh, Illinois now on the road. So they're an explosive team, and the game is never over, no matter how far they're behind. Horton pulls down another big rebound. Here's Jeff Moe from the Buff High School in the Hawkeye lineup. 2-3 zone by Indiana. Trying to force that outside shot. You can see... Uh, Marble down to the baseline. Look at this. Blocked away by Garrett. Mo. Mo will put it back up again. Garrett gets a hand on it again. Two great blocks by Dean Garrett. Here's Indiana. Alford takes it back out. That's a good play. He set it up. And over the back, low Realize, house is called. For the realizing he didn't have a good play because Iowa wants you to run. They want you to get in that, in that game. That's, a, that's the way they want to play. And low house picks up a foul. Second team foul against Iowa it is 6-1 and we have played about three minutes ten seconds Indiana down by five and in out of bounds and last touch by Alter he put it off the knee of Lohaus and it came right back to him and Steve knew he was coming close to the five second call and they made the right play the ball just happened to bounce right back at him Indiana's still in the zone now, and you can see how much longer it takes Iowa to get the shot away uh, on the half-court offense than the fast break. So this is not uh, really the kind of game they want, and this is why it's important for Indiana to try to force them to set the half-court offense each time down the floor. And it's going to be on Callaway as Lowhouse playing much better than he did when we saw him here last year, as well as at Indiana. He had only four points last year and, and uh, wasn't a starter. Uh, Lorenzen from uh, Cedar Rapids, the 6'9 junior, started last year. But uh, Lohaus, left-handed shooter, has really come on. And he's become not only an intimidator, but a scorer as well. His first point. And he plays a forward position. He's seven foot tall. He runs pretty good. Uh, not a bad touch. 71% from his free throws. That's excellent for a big man. And he's really been a good addition. But the whole key to the Iowa team is they go nine deep. Although we haven't seen a lot of substituting here early. Well, Horton gets an easy two. It's 9-1. Indiana down by Aiden as we look across at the Indiana bench. Great concern over the pressure that the Hawkeyes have implied, applied against Indiana early in this game. And the Hoosiers' ineffectiveness to take it inside. Up and in. And Garrett for exactly two. Exactly what you mentioned. Taking it inside. Garrett held his position well. And, of course, look at Iowa trying to fast break after a made basket. Mo and Thomas chases it down. Here come the Hoosiers, three on one. Pulls up. And knocks away. Here's Marble. Now, this is the thing that hurts Indiana because Iowa is back so quickly. Blocked by Garrett Powell. And that's going against Callaway, his. But Iowa comes right back at you, and I think the more change of possessions there are, the more that favors Iowa. As you can see how quickly they're able to get a shot away on the fast break. And then now a little bit of foul trouble for Indiana as Callaway picks up his second early in the game. 9-3, Hoosiers trailing. A lot of fans watching us tonight. We even had fans from Tulsa, Oklahoma call us. They're watching by satellite. <laughs> Gary, Gary Wright now, number three in the lineup, 6'7", 220. Left-handed player. And he gets the roll on the second one. He has two, and we have timeout at Carter Hawkeye Arena. 
You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Iowa 11, Indiana 3. On the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network, uh, Illinois and Purdue are entering overtime. They're tied at 80 at West Lafayette. Lee with a three-point shot for Purdue to bring that game into OT right at the buzzer. Right here at Carver Hawkeye Arena, it's Iowa leading by eight in Indiana's offensive and defensive ends play. Uh, has left a lot of room for improvement, John. Right, this is the game Iowa likes to play, and you can see with 11 to three lead, uh, they've got to be pleased. So Indiana's got to, again, make uh, Iowa set their offense up, and that's difficult. If you take a shot, they get the rebound. They're already into their offense with that fast break. Somehow you've got to be able to get back quick enough to stop it. Now here's their other uh, form of offense is the trap. This is a full court pressure defense. They're looking for a turnover and over to make a quick basket at the other end. Well, Indiana broke that fairly effectively. And then set up the uh, the, the half-court offense. you got to make Iowa play a lot of half-court defense. Uh, try to wear them down a little bit. Block. Shot by Smart is good. And this may be a key. The effectiveness of Keith Smart and Steve Alford from the outside. You know they're going to overplay Steve. So if Smart, with his athletic ability and his leaping ability, can get some to drop, Indiana could get back in this game. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Lorenzen in the lineup. Al Lorenzen, the junior from Cedar Rapids. He's handling the ball. Now he gives it and goes away. And this is Marble. Bill Jones, 14 in the Jones, lineup now 14. for Iowa. Off the rim, Lorenzen follows. Garrett just watched it go out of bounds, and it's going to be Iowa ball. Yeah, another uh, rebound, offensive rebound. And I think that stat is more important to Iowa than the turnover stat. There's the Coach Knight's record against Iowa, 18 and 10. Number three. Jer uh, Gary Wright in the lineup. And he is considered to be one of the more athletic players Frank on this Lee. Iowa team. He's got an injury on the left hand. You can notice a bandage the next time you see him. Uh, got his hand in a door and has missed a couple games because of that. Mo leans in and gets his rebound. And then goes right over Garrett. Here comes Callaway working up on Gamble across the line. Knocked away. The steal. Jones on the break. And he's cut. It. Bill Jones. <laughs> up court to Alford. It's 15-5. And two from Dean Garrett. We have lost uh, our monitor out here at court side, so... Uh, on replays, we're just going to have to sort of play along with some of you fans at home and uh, hope that we stay with the action. Mo, and it doesn't fall. Garrett tries to one-hand it down, scramble on the court, and here's Smart. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Back to defend is Jones. And a whistle. That's going to go against Jones uh, as he tried to make the steal on Key Smart. But you can see Mo's the one battling in there now. For those offensive rebounds, that's the second time in a row now. Joe Hillman's going to come in to replace Smart. Marble back in the lineup for Iowa. And we've got a couple of new faces as uh, they turn. Well, Horton uh, is back in the lineup. And uh, number 10, B.J. Armstrong as well. It'll be Indiana to toss it in. Daryl Thomas. And he looks all the way back out to Callaway. To Hillman. Hillman will be working the point. And we see it looks like a 3-2. In the corner to Callaway. Steps inside. Eight feet. No good. Rebound. Thomas. Knocked out of his hands. Loose ball. Chased down by Garrett. Off to Thomas. See, Alford has not been able to get the ball in scoring position. And I think that's what I was trying to do defensively. Three on the way. And boy, that had nothing but net all the way. And he was about two steps outside that line, too. Armstrong. Free throw line. Garrett and a foul as Thomas cleared the ball away. And they call that foul on Ed Horton. 25, Ed Horton, right? Let's see, Iowa makes more substitutions now. Armstrong, number 10, is back in the lineup. And now Low House is back in. So this is their style. They'll play two, three, five minutes maybe. And then uh, they get a break, bring some new players in. Indiana with the ball. Here's Meyer into Alford. And there's the press. 
And up to Hillman. Hillman gets it away from the side. That's the greatest place to trap if you're a quick team. Easy shot by Rick Calloway. They left him alone. His first field goal. Indiana's back in the game now. 15-12 at the 13-minute mark. And they're using it on that half-court offense here again. You see, they've made Iowa set up their offense. Low house. And they shove it down on the corner to Marble, out to Gamble. Here's Marble. Marble just slides side to side on the baseline to Horton. And that's hard off the glass. Todd Meyer, good hand, tries to get it out. He's fouled as he pushes it out. And it's going to be Indiana's ball. That was a now kick. Now say kick ball. Todd Meyer with a good rebound there, but you can see how limited uh, the Iowa offense is when of course you only give them one shot the hoop you give them that second that second shot off the rebound and they're very dangerous so the whole key is going to be rebounding we'll try to watch that rebounding stat for you in today's game okay it's going to be Meyer and he needs somebody there he is Alford good Steve. defense by Marble he really kept Steve from making that penetrating move inside Hillman, Alford, three more. No. Here's Marble. And that's goaltending. I don't think that ball would have gone. They call goaltending. Well, he got a late jump that time as uh, we've got our monitor back now. And the buzzer sounds. Now, Indiana had possession of the ball. That buzzer should not have sounded. Right, and in fact, the official Ed Hightower and he said play, but the players said stop, so they did blow the whistles. The substitute is not allowed to come in yet, and it'll be Indiana ball out. And Indiana still has the run of the line. And it comes, and stolen by Armstrong, up over Garrett, and a foul on Garrett. No, it's going to be a travel. Aha, uh -huh, okay. On Armstrong. He got caught. A good defense by Callaway as he backed away as Armstrong started to make his drive. Now we have a timeout. All right. We have 12 minutes even remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. It's Iowa 17, Indiana 12. is the 121st meeting between Iowa and Indiana. The Hoosiers lead the overall series 70 to 50. Iowa won here last year by 10, 79-69, and Indiana won at Assembly Hall 80 to 73 later on. Kicked out of bounds. There's that pressure. They, they are just so quick and think, guard you so closely. You think the man's open underneath there, and then by the time the pass reaches him, he's covered up. Okay, into Hillman. Now they release the pressure. They're looking for a trap. Watch. Right. You see Marble right there in the center. He's trying to use that sideline as uh, Alford goes around Lowhouse. And Lowhouse at seven feet guarding 6'2", Steve Alford. Meyer. Alford steps up. Hillman. Callaway won't fall. Boy, I'll tell you, Horton really gets up after that ball. That's a good offense by Indiana. Callaway just uh, missed the shot, but no team likes to play defense, and then come the uh, last 10 minutes of the ball game, a team will get tired of playing that defense. Good pass there by Mo. Lowhouse with his first field goal. He has three, and Iowa begins to sneak away again, leading now by seven. And there's a foul over the shoulder, B.J. Armstrong with his first personal. Todd Meyer made a good play there by coming to the ball. Instead of waiting for the ball to come to him, he kept on, his, on an angle to meet the ball, and that way Armstrong had the foul in order to try to make the steal. And John, really as academic as it sounds, that is a key to good pass attack anyway. All right, you've got to come to, to the, the ball. ball. A lot of times players wait for the ball to come to them. The defense steps right in front of them and comes up with a steal. All right, Keith Smart back in. Replacing Hill, no, Hillman's still in there. 
Here's Smart from the line. Oh, he gets it to roll. And that's Lowhouse coming out on the block, so he really had to use all his sleeping ability there. 1914, still a five point lead. Iowa, we have 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. First half. And Alford knocks it away. Here's Smart after the steal. Oh, that was Hillman, I'm sorry. After uh, the steal, they turn it right around. Marble, and he goes to the rim and scores. Just really astounding conversion. Yep, just, just so quick. You think Indiana has the advantage, but a missed a dribble by Keith gives Iowa the ball, and now they've got the advantage going the other way. All right, here's Smart. He's got to watch. See, notice how he didn't dribble into that sideline. Got rid of the ball before Iowa could trap. Thomas takes it right inside. Daryl Thomas with his first field goal. And it's back to a five-point Hawkeye lead, 21-16. No, look how far out Lowhouse plays. Armstrong, no good. Weak side, Indiana have no one over there, and Marble with an easy two. The Indiana did the thing there that they want. They forced the, uh, forced the offense. They made him take an outside shot, but Iowa comes right back with the rebound. All right, Daryl Thomas with an aggressive baseline move. Armstrong holds it up. Indiana still showing a 2-3 zone. They've switched to man-to-man -man a little bit, but uh, basically it's been the zone, Chuck. And they uh, really, they're getting deep bounds on the ball. Horton, and there's a foul. Horton will go to the line. The foul is on Hillman, his first. Now, see, there's two offensive rebounds. They missed, the, they missed their first offensive rebound on the shot. They come right back and get another one. Now, watch this. Moe's got it now. He's taking a shot. Pretty good defense there, hand in the face. Darrell's trying to block out. Dean really didn't go to his man to block. The ball comes right to Horton. And now they've got a third shot on one time down the floor. Horton, uh, about 50%, 55 or so at the line. Gets this one. Springfield, Illinois sophomore, played at Lanphier. Played against Indiana last year here, January 30th, did not score. And this one will. Eight points for Horton already. And here's the pressure again, Alford. That's a good feed. Out to Hillman. Hillman drives up on Jones. Now back to Steve and back to Joe. Indiana really having to show what kind of discipline they have to bring this game back into control. There's a good turnaround. A soft shot by Garrett for his third field goal. That's right. Dean's doing a better job in his shot selection. You see, he used a fake that he was coming out with the pass and turned. Noticed the defense had fallen away and then took a good shot. Mo three. Yeah. Jeff is 24 of 71 from that area. about 34 percent Alford sends three more on the way this one doesn't fall and the rebound to Lorenzen the Hoosiers just have no one that can battle on the boards with the Hawkeyes right now Jones takes it right into Alford two players down for Indiana no, no call there either time on a charge Indiana back in the zone now got to watch Mo on the outside though and uh, reach over going to be a foul and that goes against Keith Smart, his first. Now that is the sixth team foul against Indiana. This is a good play to trap on because the big guy's got the ball outside. Alford and Smart come right in, but watch the slap there. You've got to keep your arm straight in the air and avoid that slap. You're going to call for the foul. That's what happens. Now a timeout. We have an official timeout at the 7.58 mark. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Iowa leads Indiana by 8, 28, 20. 20, that's the score. The Hawkeyes with the lead. And Indiana has had an uphill battle since the opening tip. The Hoosiers controlled the tip, took the first shot, did not hit. And Iowa has been 
in total control ever since. If they're just a very explosive team, they lead the nation in rebound margin. They average 13 more rebounds than their opponent, which is uh, unbelievable. Obviously, they're also leading the Big Ten in that category. Now, uh, that's a, a set inbound play. It comes right to Marble. In the smart against the press. And up it comes. Here's Callaway, and he'll bring it across. Indiana having a little trouble hanging on to the ball, and it's largely due to the harassment of this Hawkeye defense. Ten point lead, 30 20. Thomas wheels, dishes. Tries to go back up again, draws a foul. Boy, he stayed in there in battle, too. He made a good move. But Iowa, the big team that they are, was able to block that shot. He still stayed after it and uh, right with the foul. The first foul on Gary Wright, the 6'7 senior from San Bernardino. Well, all of you who have been watching the Purdue-Illinois game and to watch Purdue come out with a one-point victory, 87-86, we welcome you to the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network from Iowa Hawkeye Arena, where the score is Iowa 30 and Indiana 20. And a foul, and that's going to be called against Rick Calloway. Wow, Rick can't believe that call. It's offered through the high pass, and Ed Hightower ruled that Iowa had the position, and Calloway initiated the contact, and that's his third foul. So 7.17 to go. He's got to come out for the rest of the half. That is uh, that's a difficult call to interpret. Here's Jones, pushes off on Smart, no call. Bounced inside, Smart tries to chase it down, right, back to Jones. And we have a blocking foul called against Smart. That's a good call. Keith uh, is not in a position. He really forced the contact that time. Bob Showalter says uh, one and one. Here's the pass. Now watch Smart. See how he kind of moves out here. Boom. There he is. Sticks his chest right into Jones. And he makes a good shot, but he's going to get two shots. He's going to get a one and one. That was before the shot. Jones. Oh, and two Indiana players, Smart and Thomas, both go down. Complaining to the officials about uh, one of the Iowa players knocking him down, but it's not going to go that way. Now they got to wipe the floor up a little bit. 11 point lead for Iowa, 31 20. A 6 7 junior, you're looking at him from Detroit. Bill Jones. Limited statistical information about Jones. I haven't seen an awful lot of. Action misses this shot, and they get the offensive rebound, put it back in. That's Gamble. See Chuck, they, and here they come right to the press. And it's going to be a foul on Gary Wright. Wright and Smart collided. Their legs tangled up, and they're going to call that foul on Wright. I was going to mention on Iowa's last basket by Gamble, Iowa, I haven't been able to keep track, but they have not scored a lot when they've for been forced to set their offense up. Most of their baskets have come on those second rebounds, and uh, and that's the whole key is the rebounding here. Indiana's not been able to shut off it, Iowa just taking one shot, and that's the reason for the 13-point lead. Brian Sloan for the Hoosiers, number 45. As Keith Smart readies, Baton Rouge Jr., with his first free throw and fifth point. Ball's a little wet. He asked uh, Bob Showalter to dry it off a little for him. Good concentration there. The Iowa section, the band, the students right behind the basket there. Not that he can see him, but they're making a little noise. Armstrong, that's blocked by Garrett, and he one-hands it right back to Armstrong. Uh, he's got to catch that ball, though. It, it was partially deflected, and he blocked it down. I was able to retain a possession. Blocked again. No basket, no goaltender, but it's going to be a foul against Indiana. That will go against Daryl Thomas, his second. 
Well, they say that's the third. Well, they, they call that against Keith Smart. That's his third. Tony Freeman will see some action now for Indiana, replacing Smart. Boy, what a great game he had against Northwestern. 13 assists in that ball game, just one short of the all-time record uh, for an Indiana player for assists. Horton can't get this one, or Gamble rather, can't get this one to roll in. This is not an exceptional free throw shooting team, although Gamble does get this one, his pit point. We welcome our flagship station, Channel 4, back to this game where it is Iowa 34, Indiana 22 with 627 remaining in the first half the Hoosiers have the ball and have had trouble getting themselves into this contest at one time the Hoosiers were within five but Iowa has slowly methodically opened the lead it, it, to the viewers just tuning in it's uh, it's really been a game where Indiana's trying to set their half court offense because Iowa wants the fast break but Iowa's done the job on the offensive boards getting second shots there's a good feed from Sloan to Garrett. And Garrett with his fourth field goal. It's a 10-point lead. Outside, Gamble won't fall. And the rebound to Garrett. He pulls it down. Midst all the Hawkeye arms. Walter. Notice Freeman. how patient Indiana will try to be. And Steve. Steve really hasn't gotten yep. the ball in shooting position a lot, although he does have a three-point shot. And that's a foul on Sloan. They're going to call it as uh, Gamble goes, or Marble goes tumbling into the photographers to our left. Low house out, Horton out, Lorenzen back in. Here's the uh, Iowa offense at its best. This is what they like to do. Look at that. Just one man back, Marble. He's their main leader, though, as far as scoring. And they like to get him the ball whenever they can, especially in an open court. We were talking about the free throw shooting skill of this Hawkeye team, 69%. Generally, you figure if a team can be shooting around 70, 71%, maybe 72, that's pretty good as a team. Roy Marble, the sophomore sensation from Flint, Michigan, is three for three. At the charity stripe and readies his second. And this is good. He has 10 points. And Iowa is back to a 12-point lead. Alford wheels it out. Good move there to avoid the trap. He caught that ball right in the corner. A go behind. Gamble. Here's a great steal by Tony Freeman. Boy, he was back to recover quickly. Alford. Inside. Thomas. Yes, sir. Gary Wright was down. Look at Darrell. He says he's all right, though. Well, just needs a breather. But as Thomas came down that stuff, he landed on Wright. Just a little slow getting up. Watch this pass by Freeman. Excellent. And this is going up strong. And see, Wright kind of turns his back, but Thomas catches his hip, and then Wright falls down on him. Well, Wright sort of moved in underneath him, too, a little bit. All right, Lorenzen, battle underneath. What do we have? A uh, blocking Offensive, foul yeah. against Gary Wright. See the, the, a little bit of the turn here in the tide as Indiana is able to get that last hoop. Rick Calloway on the bench now. He's got three fouls. He got those early and has had to spend the rest of the half on the bench. And this is a one-and-one one now, so a chance for Indiana to get the lead below double digits. That's at 10 right now for Iowa. Tom Davis in his first year makes another set and back in is Ed Horton, 6'8 sophomore. I tell you, these, when you talk about the athletic ability of this team and you look at them, uh, whenever you see a team like this, you always say, boy, they look older than a sophomore or they look older than a junior. But uh, Yes, they've had a, uh, of course, everybody from last year's team is back except Andre Banks, and I think a, a great compliment to Tom Davis, a first-year coach to come in and meet new players and to win the first 17 ball games he's had with the club. And, of course, a big key to that was the 17-day trip they took to, uh, to China. He was able to work a week at double or two-a-day practices and then took 17 days with the team. So, uh, obviously, that's been a big help for the Iowa team. Indiana will go to Hillman again. There's a little shove underneath, and 
We have a foul. This is a backing in foul on Marble. It's going to be another uh, moving he's, pick or just an yeah, offensive just foul. Back. Sloan yeah. was on the defense, and he's pleading his case to show Alter. Tom Davis uh, does not agree with it. Let's look inside. Watch 45 Sloan. See how right there is a shove. Garrett makes a steal, but Marble pushed off, and the official on the weak side makes the call. But they're going to put Garrett at the line. It looked like Sloan on the replay who got uh, knocked out of the way, and that's brought Tom Davis up also. Won't fall. There's Sloan with the rebound. Scores! What a great offensive board by Brian Sloan. Boy, big play. Now, as you saw in the replay, he's the one that uh, caused the chance and gets a hoop. Now it's six-point lead for Iowa. 36-30, 4:42 left in the first half. Marble to Lorenzen outside. No. And the Offensive rebound. rebound. Just leans in. And the rebound to Garrett. Saved by Freeman. The fans here wanted a kick on that. They, uh, Freeman able to come up with the ball. And then Indiana slows it down and sets the offense. The last four or five minutes, Chuck, Indiana's been able to come back because they played their kind of game, a half-court offense. And although Iowa's getting second rebounds, second shots on rebounds, they're not making a good field of goal percentage. Turn around by Garrett, who's strong off the rim. Down goes Sloan. Armstrong takes it right inside, lays it to Moe. Moe leans inside but travels. Garrett did the job that time as he, he was playing back and did not take the fake that Moe used and caused the travel. If Garrett leaves his feet, that foul is going to go against Indiana, but uh, it goes as a travel against Moe on a timeout. More substitutions, and we'll bring you up to date on who's in and who's out after we tell you that you're watching Indiana basketball from Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. Indiana trails Iowa 36-30. Jim and Eileen Shellhammer drive every chance they get from their home in Clarksville, Tennessee, up to Jolton, Tennessee, where they have a friend, Chris Casasanta, and he has a satellite dish. Obviously, there's a couple of loyal IU fans. It's nice to have them and all the rest of you watching us all over the country tonight. My son down in Houston, Texas, Todd, is watching us tonight, and we welcome all of you. I hope we can bring home an Indiana victory. Pressure again into Alford, back in the lineup for Indiana. One thing Indiana has done, Chuck, is a good job of breaking this press. Uh, they've taken a, quite a while to get to some of those inbounds passes, but after that, they've had no trouble getting across the timeline. Alford looking inside. That's where they want things to happen. If that's not, here it is. Up high, and a good arch on that shot by Garrett. He has 10. You call that one, Chuck. You're right. The half-court offense, either a shot by Alford outside, or to force the ball inside. Indiana's now down four. 36-32. Now, John, here's another key. They're forcing Iowa now to play half court. Exactly. When you make a hoop, it's very rare when Iowa can come down the fast break, and they're not as good on half court offense, but that's what they can do. There's an offensive rebound, another possession. And Lohaus pops it from outside. He has five. See, that, that's the whole key to the game. If you limit Iowa just to one shot each time down the floor, and here's a turnover. Armstrong. And Freeman reaching in commits the foul. See, that's how quick the tide can turn. Indiana was right in the game at four points and, uh, and had a possession. Iowa takes the shot and then misses it, but gets the rebound, puts it in. Now they're able to put the press on. If, if Indiana gets that rebound, now Iowa can't press. So Indiana's able to go down and set the offense. So the whole key to their game is the transition. They're very good at it. 38-32. We have three minutes even. Three minutes. Gamble, as we said, a 70% shooter. This, this is going to be a big three minutes, too, Chuck, because yes, Indiana's sir. right there. Uh, it could be down eight, but they got to within four. If they can come back to within four, uh, even giving up as many offensive boards as they have, uh, they're still right in the ball game and, and hopefully can adjust a little bit at halftime. Freeman up to Alford. Tony's quickness broke that. Freshman out of Westchester, Illinois. Fires from outside. Oh, what uh, concentration he had on he that. He really did it all that time. He didn't get the pass to anybody. And here we got a turnover as Gamble loses out of bounds. So there's one time where the fast break hurts Iowa, gives Indiana the ball. But again, on an out-of-bounds play, they go right to the full-court press. Here comes Freeman. Alford chases it down. 
Good. Set it up now. Good job by Freeman. He brings it back out. Not necessarily to take the first good shot as a foul comes on Gamble. Gamble. He's drawn the assignment on Alford. And here we see again where teams like to use a big player, a quick player if they have one. This time it's Gamble on the smaller offer to try to bother him. Steve got yeah, it right in the mouth, in the mouth it looks yeah. like. Uh, he's all right. He'll get a one and one. Steve's uh, dad, Sam, is here. He got a quick flight over from Newcastle, and he's going right back. See, also on the end of the IU bench, uh, Everett Dean, the former coach, yes, is all the way up. I'm sure it's been a long time since he's been here in Iowa City, but I know he brought many teams up here to play these Hawkeyes in his coaching days. But Steve has six points, three of those from the line, and one three-pointer. I talked to Everett before the game. He came up here to visit a friend, and uh, the friend asked him if he'd like to go over and see the game and see the arena. <laughs> <laughs> of course. An old coach would never say no to an invitation like that. It's a four-point game. Iowa 40. Offensive foul. Good play by Daryl Thomas. Look at the bench. The bench is up. All five players on the floor congratulating each other as a step out, step in, as, uh, as it's called. When your man setting a pick, you step out that way, and that time it draws a foul. You can hear the Iowa fans not happy with it. Ed Hightower forgot to make the call oh, to the, the bench. The officials are right. They didn't really go over to the bench. So now Indiana ball, 219, and a chance to cut the lead to two. And that's a good move. Thomas throws it off the footman, gets out of the way. See, they're right in front of the bench. There's not a lot of room there. But the Iowa does a good job of pressuring so that she can't get that pass in. This time it goes to Sloan. Get it to Freeman. There you go. 40-36. And Indiana with two minutes, 11 seconds, and a chance to pull within two. And Thomas, but he's tripped. And Lohar has picked up his second foul, and that's going to send Darrell to the line for nearly a turnover. Look at Tom Davis. He's looking for that five-second call. Freeman loses. Look how high he's dribbling the ball. That's not good. And uh, Darrell has trouble to pass. There you see uh, he goes to the floor. The call is a trip against Lohaus, and uh, Thomas at the line. Darrell still flexing that back when he went down hard underneath. I saw him do that earlier. He may be uh, tightening up just a little bit, John. Not on that free throw, though. As you can hear, the fans uh, really starting to try to get their Hawkeyes going as they stamp their feet on the temporary bleachers and really uh, echoes throughout this arena. And that's good. He has eight. Indiana down by two, 40-38. It's a game. Now the question is, can Indiana control this intensity of Iowa? They can as long as they can do this. Force Iowa into the half-court offense and limit them to one shot each time down the floor. That's how far out Lowhouse plays. And he's a threat from out there. He's a good shot. Here's Horton. It won't fall. Lowhouse follows for two. Indiana did not close up underneath. Freeman underneath looks in the slam dunk from Garrett oh boy see th these players are now aware Chuck that even though they don't think Tony sees them he does Garrett had his hands right at waist level a target for Tony anticipating a pass and that's right where that ball came to him Garrett was ready for it no no offensive Horton. rebound and here's Freeman with a steal to Thomas Oh, he dumped tied. that ball back beautifully. Indiana has tied the game now at 42, and really it's been Tony Freeman. He comes, uh, Iowa gets the uh, second, uh, the offensive rebound. Freeman's able to make the steal, goes all the way and dishes out another assist. That's two in a row now. And with 46 seconds, 45 seconds, it's a new game. We're tied at 42. Big lift for Indiana to get themselves right in the ball game. Now. Lohaus, right back again. He has such a soft left-handed shot. All right, now they've got to be careful. Get this ball inbound. And now set up for one shot. Just 30 seconds left and a half. Let's see if Alford realizes it. Yes. He brings the ball out. Okay. Now, see, he's got one shot. All right. Now from three-point area or inside? No, I think they're just going to go try inside. a good shot. Right. I think they're going to try to go inside. If they can, uh, got time out here as a penny uh, rolls on the floor, Lohal stops to pick it up. But uh, Indiana's in great position here, Chuck. After being down for most of the half, they've got a chance to tie it. 
And as, uh, as you can see, a, a, a lift here for Indiana would be to be able to get this two points just to now, tie the game. Now that's a tough break for Indiana. They're control of the ball. Now Iowa can put the press on the inbounds again. And out of bounds, it's going to be to Indiana. And you can see how tough it is for Indiana yep. to get it in. 17 seconds. Ed Hightower saying Lowhouse has to give him some room. And we have a foul. And that's and on Jones. Jones. Grabbing Alford, not letting him go back. Jones can't believe it. And it's going to be uh, on Sloan. And Sloan came to set a pick for Alford. And Sloan's going to be at the line. He's going to call two shots. They're going to call that an intentional foul against Jones. The foul's on 25. Well, that's... Uh... Uh, they called that on 25. That's Horton. That's uh, they caught, the scoreboard they called it on 25. Horton. I didn't think Horton was anyways no, nearing. I think that's Jones. 14. Here goes uh, Bob Showalter. 25 was not in the game. They'll straighten it out. That'll go against Jones. Indiana with a little uh, mini timeout here. The players gathering around. As Alford right, comes out of the ball game now with just 17 seconds to go. At the line is Brian Sloan. And Sloan's going to be at the line. Let's see if it's two. Yes, it is. Two shots. So Bob Schulter felt that was intentional foul and gives Sloan two shots. But this also gives Iowa the last possession of the half. Still 17 seconds to go. So uh, now they've got the chance to take the lead again. Now that second one is good. Shooting by Brian Sloan. 13 seconds. Jones will work it across the line at the 10 second mark. Right inside against Isle. Marble from outside. It's good. Three seconds. Isle from the line. Oh, off the rim, no good. But we have a better ball game than we had 10 minutes ago. You can hear that by the crowd's reaction. Indiana is in the game. That's the end of the first half with the score Iowa 46, Indiana 44. We'll check individual scoring in just a minute. That's now field goal shooting, Indiana 59%, and they've had to do that. Uh, Three-point shooting really has not been a factor. Both teams hitting the free throws. Look at the rebounds. 25 rebounds for Iowa, nine for Indiana. So that's why Indiana's got to shoot 60% to make up for that rebounding difference. Iowa can get away with 46%, because of the number of rebounds they've had. Look at the turnovers, they're even at six. So uh, here's the scoring. Balanced for Iowa, Marble, Gamble, Horton, all right there. Garrett has 12 and Thomas 10. You can see Indiana's going inside today and it's been effective for him. And look at the rebounding. Horton has nine, Marble five, only two for Dean Garrett. And we felt he got a few more than that, Chuck. Uh, Daryl Thomas, they show with four. Well, the, uh, the game films, of course, would show whether or not Garrett did have more than that. He just seemed to be around the ball a little bit more, but uh, he, uh, he had to, you have to remember one thing, that is that Iowa uh, leads the nation in rebounds, and so uh, official scoring is going to lean a little bit more in their favor when there's an option. Indiana now 16 of 27 at the half for their 59%, and uh, Iowa 16 of 35, so uh, Iowa's taken eight more shots, and the reason for that, of course, is, is uh, the rebounding, offensive rebounding, they don't break down the offensive-defensive rebound. Just show a total of 25 rebounds for Iowa. Brad Lowhouse throws it in right in front of us, and it's going to be B.J. Armstrong to bring it up. Ed Horton handles underneath the Lowhouse, and he goes right inside and gets the basket over Garrett. Lowhouse now with 11 points. Indiana with Alford, Freeman, Thomas, Callaway, and Garrett. Alford all alone. And he'll pop him if you give him that much room. He has nine, the first basket for Indiana. Good pick that time. Of course, Steve wasn't involved that much in the offense, but that's good. And against the Iowa, that means Indiana's setting the half-court offense. They're going inside because Garrett and Thomas are the two leading scorers. And up and in. And that soft turnaround by Ed Horton. That's twice now. Iowa's been able to run their half-court offense and get the ball inside. So a little different style of play here early in the half. Horton has 10. 50, 46, Iowa by four. Callaway, big threat here last year, had 21, and he has but three points. 
picked up those three fouls early, but starting the second half. Shot clock down to 16, lays it up, and here's Thomas. He gets it to fall, and we have a foul. It'll go against Horton, his second. Freeman's really creating the offense here, Chuck. He's going to drive the middle. See, it's easy for him to get around that big player. He leaves his feet. Look how low house came right over. That means Horton's got to come to fill. And Thomas gets the roll. Look at the emotion there on Thomas's part. Thomas averaging 15.3 points and gets the roll of the free throw. He has 13 tonight. And it's a one-point game, 50-49. Armstrong, 10 guarding 10 as Freeman steps over. Horton misses the shot. And the rebound off the chest of Garrett into the hands of Callaway. Well, that rebound went into the Iowa hands. They just weren't able to come up with it. But there you see the advantage of just holding the one shot. Alfred close to that sideline. Zone here by Iowa, 1-2-2. Two, two. And they've got their big guy, Marble, on the top, try to do show some obstruction really for Freeman outside inside Callaway yes sir Indiana takes the lead 51 50 look how quickly Iowa is back look how quickly the basket by Lohaus well he's a good out sh outside shooter for a seven footer and again Indiana very patient now this is the way they've got to play baseline no oh! Oh, what a great drive by Callaway. That could have been a foul, a blocking foul underneath, too, because Callaway had such a start. He was in the air before that man moved under. Or oh, Ron Felling off the Indiana bench, really shouting to the team, defense now. Indiana's in the game. And knocked away. The Hoosiers with a hand on the ball. Horton puts it back up at a foul on Freeman before the shot. Now, he was in good position, but he just couldn't reach high enough to stop that pass. So he comes up with a good foul because it, it stops the layup. And uh, this early in the half, of course, gives Iowa the ball out of bounds. Oh, there's the lob inside. It comes right to Horton. Blocked away by Callaway. And the safe. Oh, the gamble. I, they, you know, they, they are just such athletes. They come up with a big play right there. It looks like Indiana had a good block. But Iowa comes up with the possession. And then the players down the floor for the fast break. The gamble was wide open. 54-53. Freeman right through the traffic. Takes the shot off the glass. Here's the rebound and the basket by Garrett. Giving both ends of that. Now that's Freeman again. He drove through three players that time and took a good shot. But Indiana had the advantage that time on the boards as Iowa was still outside. Lowhouse lets it fly from outside. Out of bounds. That's going to be. Oh, no. It was right through the hands of Marble. And they call it out of bounds, Iowa. inside to Horton and a foul. Boy, they really handed that ball quick. It didn't look like the players were set up yet for the out of bounds play. All of a sudden Iowa had it and quickly threw the threw the pass in. And you see Salford right there discussing with Ed Hightower. He said, hey, we weren't set up yet. You handed you handed in the ball before anybody was ready. Hill will be coming into the lineup. Kent Hill, number 40, 6'6", junior from Wichita, Kansas. But will be replacing Horton. Ed at the line with 10 points and uh, two shots. <laughs> Tied at 55. And we played three and a half minutes, second half. Now, Iowa with a one-point lead. Substitution. Here's Hill for Horton. Iowa can go so deep, John. Yep, that's the whole key to their team. And two starters, Wright and Lorenzen from last year, not starting this year. Alford to Callaway. Give Alford a tremendous assist on that play, and Callaway is ninth point. That's a good way to break the press. You can't use a lot, but you send a player all the way length of the court. It's a dangerous pass, but Indiana used it to their advantage. Moe back in the lineup for Iowa. Hill gets it back. Gamble. Garrett fronting low house inside. Armstrong, there's a slap. The basket will count. Foul on Freeman. And Armstrong will have a chance for a three-point play. 
Pretty good defense. Freeman a little behind. There's the slap down. Didn't look like he had a lot of contact, but just making that motion is going to draw a foul a lot. Armstrong at the line. That was B.J. Armstrong's first point tonight. And it was a big one, 58-57. He has a chance to extend that lead now. 77% shooter from the line. It's good. And again, the pressure. In the Freeman. Thomas puts it right up, misses, draws the foul. Going to go against Iowa. Tony nearly threw that pass away. It's uh, Gamble second. But uh, Darrell was able to come up with it and just made a drive. Even though he had three players to go around, made a drive to the basket, got the foul. 59-57. And Indiana with a chance to tie. That's Thomas's 14th point. Here's the second. It's good. He's five for five tonight from the stripe, and we have a timeout at Carver Hawkeye Arena. You're watching Indiana basketball from Iowa City, Iowa, where Indiana and Iowa are tied at 59. Yeah, you look at the master over there. Indiana's Bob Knight in his 16th year, looking for his 351st victory. Bob Poets and others from Mel Simon and Associates uh, were with us on the plane today coming out. John uh, flew into St. Louis with us before we left to come up through Moline and then to Iowa City. And uh, Bob and the other Simon and Associates uh, members are at a meeting uh, out west, and uh, they're watching us tonight on satellite. Well, as much interest as I've heard here from the Iowa people, I'm sure back in Indiana there's a lot of TVs turned <laughs> on to us right now. It's the game of the week nationally, but uh, no national TV. Doug Mo or, uh, Jeff Moe to the side, and as they work it around, Marble. There's his own 2-3 by Indiana. Inside, Horton blocked away. Garrett really timing well. Watch the action inside. Look at Daryl Thomas here with uh, Horton. Jones, Jones is double. Mo three, and it's good. That's his second. Well, they really look for Mo when Indiana goes to that zone. If they can't get it in, they let Mo take that three-point shot, and he's hit a couple today now. Thomas, oh, he jams it underneath, but draws the foul. He had an excellent opportunity to set up for a three-point play. Boy, Freeman, Freeman has made the difference. Look at Mo trying from behind there. He splits two defenders and then gets the ball to Thomas. Tony Freeman's been the difference of Indiana coming back with his ability to break the press and then set the players inside up with the easy passes for easy shots. Tough passes for easy shots. Mo from three-point range is 25 of 72 now. Good concentration by Darrell. Remember early in the year he was having trouble with that free throw line. Uh, that's uh, a good effort on his part. He looks like he's uh, much better on the concentration. He hits another one. Thomas has 17. He is 7 for 7 at the charity line. And Indiana is down by 1, 62-61. Uh, let's change that. Mo is 23 of 73. 25 of 73, I'm sorry. Now we've got it straight from three-point range. And Jeff handles cross court is the drive and good body control right back up again. Hill fights and puts it in. Here's Indiana once again breaking the press. Thomas misses the shot and it's out of bounds Indiana. And again Freeman makes that happen yeah, and Freeman's uh, He's probably bopped some people in the head with a pass in practice because every one of those guys has their eyes glued to him knowing a pass is on its way. Well, he got caught by Lohaus, there was no foul that time. And that Mo misses the shot, but it's put in by Marble. Indiana got caught back. Five-point lead. You see how quickly Iowa can force the action and take the lead. Freeman. 
Block. No foul. Three on the way, and it's no good. That's low house. He's going to be called for the foul. Right over the bat. And the fans don't like that one bit. Oh, that's the, the, the big and the little there as Lowhouse goes around Freeman, but bumps him, fighting for the ball. Tom Davis, uh, not with a look. He's, uh, he said, I didn't think you got him. But that's going to go out of bounds to Indiana. Iowa up five now. You can see how quickly from that 58-58, a 59-59 score, how quickly they come to life with those turnovers. Uh, some debris on the floor. And the players clear it off. Uh, looks like I, Dean Garrett, comes over near half court. Well, I certainly don't think the fans realize that pennies, pennies are horrible, but ice can be just as bad uh, thrown, on, thrown on the floor. Up to Freeman. He pulls up at the line, and it's no good. Here's the follow. Here's Mo on the break. He's going to drive on offered score. Seven point lead, 68-61. Callaway pulls up, misses the shot. And a jump ball. No. Turnover. Bombing. Offense. Carried the uh, ball. Against Iowa. Carried the ball. Right. Indiana wants timeout. It'll be Indiana ball when we get back. You're watching Hoosier basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network to score Iowa 68, Indiana 61. What was a tie game has turned out to be a seven-point Iowa lead, 68-61 with 13.39 left. Well, Iowa's been able to force the action with that press and the turnovers leading to the fast break, break baskets as they did early in the game. So you see uh, Coach Knight with the players. They've got to get that game slowed down again, make it a half-court game, but it's just tough to do, Chuck. Keith Smart back in the Hoosier lineup replacing Freeman. And this capacity crowd, a sellout house at Carver Hawkeye Arena, showing their Hawkeye support. And the Hoosiers just can't get it in. What do we have? Five seconds against Indiana. That's really the first time, though, on a five-second call, but it just comes at a bad time. The crowd was up before the press started, and now you come with a turnover. And before they can sit down, if they get another hoop here, it's nine-point game. Roy Marble with 14 points, but it's been a balanced Hawkeye attack that has given them this seven-point lead. Gamble, Armstrong, over to Lorenzen, inside, and Horton just owns that spot. 14 points to Thomas. Back out to Callaway. Alford has handled the ball very little. This is zone by Iowa. 2-3. Two, 1-2-2. Two, two. See if we can get Alford on a three-point shot. Callaway. Smart. And there's another steal. Here comes Marble. Callaway, but the tip is good. Get it to 35 Kevin Gamble. And it's kicked. It's going to be Indiana ball. See, I don't think Iowa minds that because now they have time to set the press. And you know, all the players are up. 11 point lead now for Iowa. But they get to set their press again. And they just try to continually put pressure on you. Lorenzen will defend the inbound. Thomas to Alter. And it's going to be out of bounds. Indiana again. Touched by Lorenzen. He was on the line. Up to Smart. He has Garrett, but Smart takes it alone. Oh, he, he can really get up as Horton was back on defense. Smart went right over the top. And again, that long baseball pass, that was the pass that was open. It's a nine-point game. Armstrong and an easy two. Indiana just falling asleep on the baseline. And the seal. And more. Indiana is now wielding against the press. All 
Stanford. 76-63, a 13-point Hawkeye lead. And just three minutes ago, Indiana was in this game. Three on the way by Smart. It's no good. Right through the hands of Thomas. Armstrong. Boy, this is their game. The way they like to play it, the pressure, and that's how quickly they can score. 15-point lead now for Iowa. 11 minutes, five seconds remaining. All for three, it's good. That'll quiet them for a while. When they use that zone, that's the play Indiana needs to use now to try to come back in the game. Armstrong gets two of them right back. <laughs> 80, 66, 14 point lead. Garrett will fire, and that wasn't a good control shot, jump ball. Thomas had the ball, but uh, it's tied up and it's going to be Indiana on the alternate possession. We have a timeout with 10.34 left to play. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Iowa leading the Hoosers 80 to 66. Ten and a half minutes. The game certainly is not over, but 80 66 a 14 point lead after we were tied in the 60s John uh, really doesn't look too good for Indiana uh, you're right there Chuck 14 points down now 80 points already for Iowa and there's still 10 and a half minutes left to go in the ball game so it looks like they're going to cruise to 100 points and they've been able to play that transition game uh, they've gotten the lead when Indiana's been able to make it a half court game they've been able to come back but now the clock starts to work against Indiana the Hoosiers will try to inbounds under their own basket. Low house at seven feet is the presence on the inbounds pass, but Indiana gets it in. Brian Sloan. Indiana did a good job with Sloan in the lineup in the first half. It's smart and offered inside to Garrett. Soft shot by Garrett. Gets some glass and drops through. Now he had the inside position that time on Low House and really called for that ball. And uh, now Indiana. Two points closer. Let's see if they can hold Iowa. Jones, low house. Marble underneath the hill, out of bounds. It's going to be Indiana ball. Hill lost control. Iowa runs a, on their pattern offense. They run a cut low right under the basket on the baseline, trying to free him up uh, in a post position. Tom Davis wanted five seconds called. Here's Smart. And it's not going to fall. Can't take those kind of shots. Got a good trap Jones here. Double. Mo, three more on the way, and that won't fall. Mo chases it down out of bounds, Iowa. Hey, there's the three-point opportunity, but still out of bounds to Iowa. 9:41. It's 80-68. Indiana down by a dozen. And Lorenzen, or Lohaus, rather. That foul's going to come from behind on um, uh, Brian Sloan. Sloan, trying to keep uh, Lohaus from getting position. And that is the second foul against Sloan, and the fourth against Indiana in the second half. Jones across the top of the key. Indiana just needs to pick at this game and on the inside it's going to be called on Daryl Thomas it's that low cut that I just talked about they sent Horton that uh, hill that time Thomas trying to get the position that's five team fouls now still out of bounds to Iowa Indiana wants to switch here as uh, it puts uh, Daryl Thomas on Sloan's man and Sloan on Thomas from the side P.J. Armstrong and his first three-pointer up it comes. Smart to Sloan to Alford. He'll send three on the way and score. Steve shooting well off the move tonight. Yes, he is. He knows he's got to be behind that line to get the uh, three-point opportunity because Indiana needs it to get in the game. Turnover. Travel. That's a travel, and it's a good call by Bob Showalter, even though there was contact between Hill and Thomas. Well, the turnovers have really hurt Iowa. 
in the Big Ten stats released uh, this year or this week. They averaged 17 a game, but they uh, they averaged three more turnovers than their opponent, and that's really hurt them today. It's given Indiana uh, opportunities to get back in the game. Sloan doubled in the corner, out to Alford across the line. Alford pulls up, drops it off to Smart. Smart gets two. And Steve uh, was going to take that three-pointer, but saw the defense coming from behind wisely dumped it off 83 73 now it's 10 you see Indiana still fighting Iowa moving the ball well Horton Armstrong to play with it around that three point they'll let Horton inside. take that outside shot you see how low Daryl Thomas is and Marble all alone for his 16th point five seconds off well, Indiana just really seems they get in trouble when they break away from the ball. You really need to start uh, high, like at the free throw line, then break toward the ball, toward the man throwing the pass in, so that you can get that. And they can see how how effective that press is. Mo checks back in for Iowa, and Marble takes a rest. Inbounds, out of bounds, going to no, be Indiana. No. Lowhouse touched the ball as it right. Sloan had his hand in the in the path of the ball. It comes right back at Lowhouse and. Uh, he grabs it out of bounds. Come. See, they use low house, seven foot on the guy out of bounds. And it's just tough to see. And there's a five second call again. Boy, two quick ones in a row. Look at Daryl Thomas. He's uh, got to get better movement inside toward the ball. Indiana bench and coaching staff is really frustrated. In the mode. Blocking foul on Smart, his fourth. Well, 85-73, the Hawkeyes by 12, low house to toss it in, in front of his own bench. And the Hawkeyes controlling the ball. They are a dominant team, and uh, number one in one poll, number two in another, they are certainly earning that reputation tonight. Horton. And it's a tie, but it's going to go to Iowa. Horton lost Number that two. ball on the drive, but the arrow points in the oh. Hawkeyes' favor. We have eight minutes, seven seconds remaining. Again, balanced scoring from Iowa. They have six players in double figures. Indiana with one, two, three, four. Mo and they travel. Well, it seemed like the action had been on that side of the floor for a good minute and a half. Steve Isle comes in for Indiana, replacing Dean Garrett. Garrett with just two field goals here in the second half, and here's Lorenzen to front right, Thomas now on the inbound. Indiana's got a double stack now, and they're slowing, breaking toward the ball. Out of bounds. That's going to be Indiana ball. John, again, it just appears that nobody is coming to the ball, and the spacing on the passing better, isn't too good. Better that time as Sloan broke off the uh, a double post there high and came into the corner. you got to watch going into that corner, though, also. Alford across the line and to the right side. And let's see what Indiana can set up this time. Here's the zone by Iowa. Inside to Thomas. That's an easy two for Darrell. He has 19. Darrell had 13 last year. They're aggressive. When they can set that half-court offense up, it's just the turnovers that they commit against the pressure that's hurt. Horton. And now back to Gamble. To Moe, a whistle. And that's going to go against Isle. Again, the battle underneath. Now Number that low 44, cut. Lorenzen. And Isle with contact, and Steve picks up his first foul. And that's, uh, let's see, is that seven? team foul so now one and one 730 left in the game Lorenzo a 50% shooter from the charity strike but this offensive board power of Iowa and this is uh, not an easy rebound should he miss <laughs> Lorenzo has a point 7.29 left in the game. 
See, here's the Iowa strength now. They've rested Marble. They still hold 11-point lead, and now he comes back in. Jones comes in. Armstrong goes out. They get a two-minute rest, three-minute rest, and then they come right back in. So they always try to have some fresh players in the ballgame. And Lorenzen misses this one. Here's Indiana trailing 86-75. Down to Sloan, back to Alford. Sends three more on the way in the good. Boy, he saves the ball out of bounds, and then nobody pays attention to him. He slips right back in. Sloan, a very alert to get Steve the ball again. Now it's an eight-point game. 86-78. We have 7.05 left to play. Mo out high for the ball and goes right to Bill Jones to Horton. They're giving the in, uh, Indiana on the inside right now. Now Horton tries to make a flash to the ball. And this is Horton holding out top of the key. The shot clock's down to 10. Now they call the offensive play. Here's Jones to Mo. He'll send three. Good. Keith Smart on the break, and Mo commits the foul, banging the shoulder of Smart on Mo. His Boy, that, first foul. That's going to turn out to be a big play. 6:30 left. The shot clock running down, and Iowa is forced to take about a 22-footer that Mo hit. So uh, instead of getting the ball down the other way, they increase the lead to 11 points. 89-78. Smart. And tries to feed it inside and uh, right through the zone. That's yeah, that pass not the wasn't kind of there. pass you like. That pass wasn't there. Uh, too many defensive players between uh, the passer and the receiver. Hey, the best offense they've had now is a three-point shot by Steve. Just a matter of setting him up. Draw the yeah. uh, defense in. There's a good job right there. He decided not to take it. There's set up again. Now a pick. rotates with Horton from down inside and is able to deflect the ball out of bounds. So good half-court defense by Iowa. Ball off Horton, then off Alford. Smart sits down as Freeman reports back in for Indiana with 6.03 left to play. 11-point Hawkeye lead, 89-78 to Mo Lorenzo. Jones back to Mo. Fans wanted a foul on Sloan. Jones. And 21 seconds on the shot clock. It's like I was taking their time now. Right, uh, the clock is working. They're, they're running there. the clock now. Jones from inside. And Marble crashes the board. Travels. See, they just send five guys every time a shot's taken. They send five guys into the rebound. Very unusual that they would, but uh, that's how they come up with so many. And uh, there's Coach Tom Davis. Garrett Farrell for Indiana. Uh, substituting again. Lorenzen's out. Now he's going to bring uh, Gamble back in. Moe comes out. He's got two or three fresh guys. Into Garrett. To Freeman. Alford, three more. Yes. Good play by Tony as he breaks the press and then looks for Steve on the three-point opportunity. Seven-point ball game. 89-81. Eight points. Just wishful thinking, Chuck. <laughs> well, I, I wish you were right. Horton way out high. This They'll is, the, this the, is the game Indiana wants, though. Here's Iowa in their half-court offense. Moles out of the game now. So they'll probably try a, a three-pointer, and, and Tom Davis calls timeout. He didn't like that offense. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. With 4.48 remaining, it's Iowa by eight. At Carver Hawkeye Arena, there's the score and the time remaining. Alford is five for seven from three-point range tonight, and he is four for four from the stripe. One two-point field goal for 21 points. See, with Mo out of the lineup now, Iowa doesn't really have that uh, good outside shooter. So Indiana's in their zone. Iowa, of course, trying to run some clock, but they still got to make movement in their offense. 
And Tom Davis didn't like what he saw and called that timeout. So let's see if they've made any changes. Iowa ball out of bounds. And it'll be Lohaus, Brad Lohaus, to toss it in. To B.J. Armstrong. Armstrong, the 6'2 sophomore from Detroit. Inside to Lohaus. Blocked, blocked away and saved by Freeman. And we have a foul. Well, Garrett's done a good job inside with that intimidation. That's three or four blocks now he's had. Unfortunately, sometimes Iowa's been able to come up with it. That time it went to Indiana. But again, here's an out-of-bounds play. And they put the press back on. Freeman. And they're just waiting to trap him over here. And he gets right through it. 89-81. Basket here can make this a different game. Still zone by Iowa. Garrett trying to get open inside. Here he is. No, he's not going to shoot that one. Freeman tries to set him up. Armstrong stays right out on Alford. Sloan. Out of bounds, Indiana. It's six seconds now on that shot clock. So Indiana needs a quick shot here. It'll be Thomas to toss it in. To Garrett. Oh, oh. falling away from the basket, too. Yep, and then nobody really to get that inbounds pass to, and Garrett turns it right into two quick points. Now it's a six-point ball game. 344, the clock ever so important. Gamble, low house. Now Marble, Roy. Boy, battle inside. Look point. at Thomas and Lowhouse. Armstrong. And he got two over Garrett. Alford. Out to Freeman. Now Freeman wants Alford, so he's going to hold up. 91-83. Picked his dribble up there. Got away with it. Inside to Thomas. There's a foul that's going to count, and Lowhouse has just fouled out. See, good job by Alford there. As everybody wants... Uh, thinks he's going to take that three-point shot, but he doesn't when he's closely guarded. He simply swings the ball around, and that means there's an opening inside, and right there, Freeman sees it. He goes to Darrell. Look at the, the, the roll goes in. Lowhouse fouls out of the game. And again, his, his presence is important on the offensive boards and being the defender on the guy out of bounds on that press. At seven foot, he's hard to throw that ball around. Now, but John, I'll tell you, they are so deep on the bench, they go right to Lorenzo. Now comes in. 6'9", Junior from Cedar Rapids. He was a starter last year. And uh, he comes in and has something to say to Horton underneath. Horton is playing with three fouls. And Thomas at the line. Big basket, big uh, free throw here if he should make it. And he does. He has 22. And it's now 91-86, a five-point game. Oh, this is where each possession becomes so valuable now. Just under three minutes. And turnovers can hurt you right here. Armstrong right in that three-point area. Marble and Horton. And they play with it around the top. They have a post. Lorenzen underneath. He, oh, he traveled. Goes right back up and scores. Oh, they just let him walk right around on the inside. Offensive rebound. And there's a foul on Lorenzen, and he pushed him twice just to make sure. Good opportunity here for Indiana. Gives him a chance to rest. Score, of course, while the clock is stopped. But that offensive rebound just kill you. It looked like a Lorenzo may have stepped. And then when he missed the shot, he was right in position to get his own rebound. We have two minutes, 28 seconds remaining. 93-86. Well, we test Tony's medal here. He doesn't get too many opportunities at the strike. 5'7 freshman out of the same school that produced Isaiah Thomas and Daryl Thomas. And the second is good. He hits them both. Good shots there. Uh, pressure for the uh, the young freshman. He really hadn't been in that situation here in the in college yet. And he puts a little pressure on Armstrong. That that forces them into the half-court game. Indiana can get set up. And what do we have here? Foul on Sloan. 
as he and Marble get into a pushing. Oh, they're tonight. running that baseline cut. Indiana's trying to front that cut to avoid a pass low right up to the block. And that's two or three times now. Indiana's been caught uh, a little bit behind and kind of bumping there. That time it was Brian Sloan. 93-88. Now we've seen the game take swings. Only well, only uh, occasionally for Indiana, but, but each time Indiana's been able to come back. Iowa had, uh, I think they got that lead back up to 13 or 15 shots here in the second half, and there's a missed free throw. Oh, uh, and, they, and they get the rebound. See, they just control the board. So I look over, Bob Knight just leans back. Even in a free throw situation, they're able to scrap and come up with the ball, and more importantly, the 45 seconds on the shot clock. Lorenzen. Armstrong back to Horton. Marble. Lorenzen. The oh. offensive foul on Lorenzen. Boy, I'll tell you, gutsy position by uh, Daryl Thomas. I think he knew he had it. Yep. And that's why he took that position. So a uh, minute 45 now, 93-88. Iowa with the lead. Indiana's going to be able to get this ball in bounds before they can set the pressure up. So a little break there for Indiana. Chance to cut the lead. Freeman. Watch the trap now. Watch the trap. Three three players there. Somebody's open. Back to Freeman. Thomas. There's the screen by Sloan. No basket, they say. On the line. Oh, can't believe it. Well, Freeman set that up. Sloan set the pick, and as Steve went around it, I could not get a good look. Uh, that's right in front of us, but I didn't get a good look at the sideline there to see if he stepped out. Well, he may have stepped out, but I don't know whether he had the ball when he was out. That's and he made the, that three-point shot. Yes, he sure did. Freeman goes down, no contact. Minute 16, here's Armstrong on the drive and gets the basket. Armstrong has 16. It's 95-88, a seven-point game. Alfred lets it fly. Tipped up. Foul, Garrett. Garrett made a good effort on that rebound, but as he came up with it, he got called for the foul. So you can see how big that play was, the sideline play, when Alfred makes that three-point shot. Indiana wants timeout. 59 seconds remaining. You're watching Indiana. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana trails Iowa 95-88. John, uh, the big question will be with the score 93-88, was Alford on that line when he had the ball? Well, the camera angle here, at least for that sideline, is uh, the cameras are to our back, and that's the sideline uh, that Steve stepped on. The official was right there, and uh, that call went against Indiana, and I didn't really get a good look at it. That would have at least made it 93-91, but now it's 95-88, and Horton at the line shooting. Thomas with the rebound. We have 55 seconds. Freeman takes it inside, puts it up off the rim, and the rebound pulled down by Horton. Here's a break by Marble. He'll take it in and slam down. That just about ice it down. for Iowa. Looking to go 18 and 0 on the season. Steal by Armstrong. Another fast break. Marble on the lead gives it back to Gun. 28 seconds, 99, 88, 11 points. Alford. Sloan, and that one won't fall. Rebound to Horton. Armstrong. Marble, once again, slapped away. Gamble as it slapped away. And a foul, that's gonna go against Alford. Two seconds left now, 101-88. Kevin Gamble with 15 points. The 
will be at the line to shoot one more. 101 88 with two seconds. And there weren't too many joyous moments in this game for IU. Gamble misses. Tip back. He gets the second shot. It doesn't go on the contest for goal. Final score. Iowa 102. Indiana 88. We'll be back to check on the scoring and review tonight's game in just a minute. Well, let's correct the score. 101-88. Indiana 13-point loser tonight. And run the scoring very quickly for you for Iowa. Roy Marble had 18 to lead the team. But listen to this. Ed Horton had 14, Brad Lowhouse 13, B.J. Armstrong 16, Kevin Gamble 15, Jeff Moe 17, Al Lorenzen had three, Kent Hill had two, and Bill Jones had three. So they have six players in double figure. For Indiana, they were led by Daryl Thomas with 22. Alford had 21. Dean Garrett, 18. Rick Calloway had nine. Keith Smart had 10 points. Indiana has four in double figures. Four from Tony Freeman and Brian Sloan also had four. So the strength on the boards is well we expected coming in. John spelled the difference. Yes, but you could see flashes where Indiana was able to control the uh, offense and get themselves in, a, in the ball game. And of course, remember, Iowa comes to Indiana in February. We'll continue with our post-game show after we hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. <laughs> 